Good morning to everyone. And welcome to this service of worship at the South Freeport Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. I welcome those who are here with us today, and I welcome those who might see the video of this service. You are indeed welcome, no matter where you are on your life journey, no matter where you are on your faith journey. On the liturgical calendar, today is the second Sunday of Advent, the Sunday on which the Christian virtue of peace is celebrated. On the secular calendar, today is December the 5th, 2021. Since this is the first Sunday of the month, we shall celebrate the sacrament of communion. All are welcome at the table. And as I just mentioned, that the first, I just mentioned the first Sunday of the month is the communion Sunday, but I should therefore also say, since the first Sunday of the month next month is the 2nd of January, the deacons have voted wisely, I think, to have communion in January on the Sunday after that, January 9th. As a reminder, this community, in this community, we do try to maintain physical distance, and we thank you for helping out. Please note, we don't practice social distancing. It's physical distancing. There is a difference. In line with that, we ask at the end of the service, would you please exit uh, to go to the exit closest to where you're sitting, and we also ask that if you're here early, you slide to the center, and that way someone might sit on the end of the pew. Are there other announcements this morning? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Next Sunday on the 12th at 12 o'clock, I will be leading the memorial service for Ted Wingren. And the family has advised that it is going to be by invitation only. And as such, we are in need of ushers. So we will have Cole and Steve that will be doing our AV. But we do need four ushers. Whether you are a deacon or not, we, we are in need of people to help with seating, signing in, making sure people know exactly where to go. So if you are able to help, if you would please let Steve know so we can finalize who will be ushering the service next Sunday, the 12th at 12. Thank you. I thought I saw one more. No? All right. Uh, if that's it, Mr. Rose, it's yours. I get called Mr. Rose, I feel old. <laughs> but thank you, Joe. <laughs> we have two thoughts for our morning meditation today. The first is from Mother Teresa. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. The second from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and I quote, Peace is not merely a distant goal we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal.
Please join me in the reading that's in your bulletin. We have lit the second candle of Advent, the peace candle. Let us see this candle as a symbol of the presence of your child, Jesus the Christ. Let your light shine to liberate us from all that would keep us from you. Help us thereby know your presence, peace is present to you. Let us join in singing hymn 156. And verses one, two, and three. Please be seated and please join with me in this order for communion. Let us humbly confess our sins in silence to God. Let us be in silence. We now rest assured of God's forgiveness through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Holy God, we praise you for your creation and remember your covenant made with your people, shown to us in fullness with the birth of Jesus and completed in the resurrection of the Christ. We remember, too, that on the night of betrayal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke the bread then gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, O God, these gifts, and bless us, that as we receive them, we may be united with Christ and one another and continue to be faithful in all things. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ, and through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Let us now praise the saints who have witnessed to us and preceded us throughout, throughout the ages, have prayed by reciting the Lord's Prayer using the form trespass. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. It being the time of pandemic, I hope everyone has one of these little things. I shall say the words of institution and then feel free to uh, consume them at your own pace. And I'll wait a bit. Take and eat for the body of Christ is present with you and take and drink for the blood of Christ is present with you. Please pray with me, the prayers in the bulletin. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your presence in our lives. We pray these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, an introduction to this reading from Luke. The first two chapters of Luke concern the nativity narratives. Hence, in one sense, the story restarts with the first verse of the third chapter. On the other hand, it is connected because in these verses we find John ben Zechariah, the cousin of Jesus, whose birth was foretold and reported in the earlier story, and John is now an adult. Hear now this word from the gospel we have come to call Luke. The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It's from the inclusive language version. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. Herod was tetrarch of Galilee. Philip, a brother of Herod, was tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene. In those days, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John ben Zachariah in the desert, in the wilderness. John went through the entire region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it is written in the scroll of Isaiah, and in the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of a herald cries out in the wilderness, prepare, make way for the Lord of God. Clear a straight path. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be made level. The crooked paths, the twisted paths will be made straight and the rough road made smooth and all humankind will see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of Jesus who is the Christ.
You can't applaud that, you know. These words are in Luke's Gospel. John went through the entire region of the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Most of you know I am technically retired after serving as an associate pastor in the Waldo in Waldo County at a five church cooperative. I know that sounds very Methodist, the five church cooperative. I spent 23 years in the New York conference. Then I moved back to Maine. Next, the pandemic hit. I had expected to supply preach some, but things shut down. Before I was in Waldo County, while still in seminary, I did supply preach. In two years, 104 weeks, I preached 47 times, just short of half the possible Sundays. I recite this history to explain that since I became a preacher, I have not heard a lot of other pastors preach. When you're preaching, you're not hearing the other pastors. Once, I did hear a sermon offered by a good friend. The essence of the sermon illustration used was that some people think inside the box, some people think outside the box. The recommendation made was for churches to think outside the box something we've all probably learned a lot about since March of last year. Later, I said to my friend, you've fully explained my life situation with one sermon. Some people think inside the box, others think outside the box. My take is, box? There's a box? Why was I not told? I need to be clear, thinking either inside or outside the box can be useful, wanted, warranted at times. And I may present an image which says inside the box, male, older, Caucasian, please don't be fooled, I'm a theater person. For theater people, outside the box is a given. We know what outside the box is about. Stretching. Can it be risky? Yes, you bet. However, I doubt that growth 
really happens without some stretching, without some risk taking. And this is what we hear in Luke. John went through the entire region of the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. With all those not easy to pronounce names in this reading, and Mr. Rose did a good job with that, with all those not easy to pronounce names in this reading, what is this writer doing? Offering historical context. And it's not the first time the writer of Luke has done that. This is the more famous passage which gives historical context. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken one while Quirinius was governor of Syria. It is often said Luke was written to, for, and about the poor, the outcast. The story of shepherds is not meant to depict a peaceful pastoral scene. Shepherding was a hard scrabble, marginal, risky way of life with nothing attractive or peaceful about it. Indeed, shepherds were considered the lowest of the low, outcast. So in these passages with historical context, this writer is drawing a contrast. How? By telling us who was in charge in the world, who did and who did not have a hard scrabble, marginal, risky existence. And who appears in this context? First, the shepherds who are outcast. Then the Baptist who shouts on Jordan's shore. The one about whom it can be readily said, this one is an outcast from respectable society and someone who does not care about boxes. John, however, can and does tell us about what a relationship with God looks like. And a relationship with God is about God who clearly wants to be in relationship with humanity, with everyone with those not in charge, and with those in charge. Why is it clear God wants to be in relationship with all humanity? John claims God starts this relationship with forgiveness. We are forgiven before we do anything. Further, we do not have to be we do not have to do anything to be forgiven. We have been offered this because of unconditional love. Put another way, God starts with a premise. We are trusted. We are trusted with each other's being trusted to love one another, trusted to be steward of God's world. John also says we are invited to repentance. Repentance is not about remorse, about feeling sorry. Repentance is when we turn around, turn away, we humans are facing and turn around and aim toward God. 
Repentance is when we strive to walk in the will of God. Hope with peace, with love, with joy. So when we hear this proclamation about repentance and forgiveness, these are not what popular culture says they are about. Remorse, sorrow, mercy. And that brings me back to the juxtaposition the writer of Luke presents us, presents to us in laying out context. Luke asks, who is in charge of society? Who runs the world? Luke then holds up the power brokers and contrasts that reality with those who are outcast. I think this is a given. Those who are in control or rather those who think they are in control, are generally quite comfortable inside the box. Indeed, those in control tend to use bywords. We've all heard them. Don't upset the apple cart. Don't make waves. Inside the box thinking. What's outside the box thinking? Everyone counts. All people are included. Go ahead, eat apples off the cart. Let's splash some water. Waves can be fun. So yes, doing what's new, what's different, working outside the box means taking risks. And my experience is the only way to fail is to refuse to take risks. And what's my experience? You remember I mentioned that five church cooperative? These were poor churches in a very rural area. Five towns spread across 40 miles. But they thought outside the box, took a risk. Each church had its own budget, then together they formed a separate budget and unifying in that way, despite the distance, they had the wherewithal to hire two pastors, thinking outside the box. This is also to say the preaching of the baptizer is not about any kind of ethereal, pie-in-the-sky stuff. Turning toward God needs to be real, practical, substantive, and risky. Perhaps that's why so many have a hard time with repentance, turning toward God. How much of a hard time? People turn it into something it is not. Remorse. Feeling sorry. And what happens with that we are all forgiven stuff? People are not comfortable with free gifts. What do you mean we don't owe God something for this gift? No. We don't. So, this is the Sunday of Advent when we celebrate peace. Biblical peace is not the absence of conflict. Biblical peace, the peace of God, refers to the real presence of God. Biblical peace says God is with us even when there is conflict, even in the midst of violence. And yes, that is what Christmas is really about, the presence of God. 
the birth of the Christ sends this message. God is with us. God walks with us. Indeed, this idea that God is with us often makes people really, really uncomfortable. Why do I say that? Do me a favor. Go shopping at this time of year. What do you see? Displays of trees, ornaments, electronics, cookware, you name it. And signs which say, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. But let me know if you see any sign which says, God is with us. So, let's celebrate Advent with hope, peace, love, and joy. Hope, peace, love, and joy can be found when we realize the real risk we take in our life is to ignore God is with us. God is present to us. Of course, that God is with us and present to us is the message of the baptizer. It is the message of Advent. It is the message of Christmas. God is with us. Amen. We come now to a time of gathering of joys and concerns. Are there any joys or concerns people wish to share today? And Bob has the mic. Thank you, sir. For many years, um, Residents of Freeport, including myself, my store, received packages from a woman who represented the FedEx company. And I knew her as FedEx Judy. Um, sadly, she passed away in the beginning of November. And a memorial service will be held at, uh, at uh, FCS, Freeport Community Center, today at 2 o'clock for any of you who are touched um, as I was by her cheerful presence for decades. So. Steve, do you know her first name? Uh, Judy Weed. Judy, thank you. Others. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that empowers us to work for preparing the way. Let us live with an uprightness of heart and holy joy that we may be aware of your presence because of the reality of the Christ. You are indeed a God of hope who raised up John the Baptizer, a herald who calls us to look toward the ways you would have us live.
and we hold up the members of this community of faith, the greater community, the nation, the world. We remember Judy. We remember Ted. We pray for their families. O Holy One of Israel, out of your embrace of mercy, you have brought forth joy for your people. Remind us of your ancient promise and help us make straight the paths that lead to you. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, the Messiah, the second person of the Trinity. Amen. The hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and I think I've got the number right, 154, and that's verses 1 and 4. Secular culture makes every effort it can to take over the church culture. After all, secular culture turns the birth of the Messiah, the inbreaking of God, into a buying spree while at the same time claiming there is a war on Christmas. Who's staffing the war? The sellers? The buyers? After all, when was the last time you heard somebody wish you a blessed advent filled with hope, peace, love, joy, because God is present to us? Clearly, there is no war on Christmas. There is a war on Advent. Here now, this blessing. Let us be present to one another as we go from this place. Let us share our gifts, our hopes, our memories, our pain, our joy. 
Let us go in joy, for God knows every fiber of our being. Let us go in hope, for God reveals to us daily that we are a part of God's new creation. Let us go in love, for we rest assured by Christ Jesus that the love of God is steadfast. Let us go in peace, for God is with us. Amen.